can't do anything. God understands when we're going through what seems to be the impossible. His invitation is, cry out to me. Cry out to me. Now that throws us over then to the passage in 1 Thessalonians 5. Where he says, pray without ceasing. For this is the will of God for you. So what, did, what does that actually mean when he says it's the will of God for you? Is the will of God that you pray without ceasing? Yes. But another way of interpreting that is whatever it is you're going through is the will of God for you. Now that one's harder to deal with because we don't like to think about that. We like to think about, no, God only gives me good stuff. And if I'm going through any negative stuff, that has to be the devil, that has to be something else. But we got to remember, what is God doing in his children? God's number one priority is not to make us happy and give us the ideal American life and the American dream. His number one priority is to transform us into the likeness of his son. And he works through these everyday circumstances that come in our, into our lives to teach us to start practicing truth. And as we start practicing the truth and we learn to rely on him more and more and more, our faith builds, but we're also, we may not realize it, but we're being changed on the inside too. You see, I have a feeling John and Pam aren't the same people they were a year ago. They've gone through a lot this past year. And there's been times they've had to cry out to God because they didn't know where else to cry to. And he's always there. And so, like David, Pam is saying, God's faithful. He's faithful. He's faithful through a set of circumstances no one would ever want to go through. And so whatever your deal is today, whatever you're facing, and I have a feeling we're all facing something. Whatever your thing is you're facing, your achish that's in your life, what are you doing with it? Are you crying out to God? Are you asking him to bring deliverance as only he can bring it? Or are we just worried about it? Hoping maybe it'll fix itself some kind of way. You know, there's some things that won't fix themselves. If you're facing health issues today, a lot of times they don't fix themselves. You've got to have a touch from God, like a knee that needs to be replaced. It may be family. It may be financial. Whatever it is, what's your issue? What is your achish? You see, the enemy knows who you are. <clears throat> Do we know who we are? How confident are we in who we are? Who are we? We're the covenant people of God. And just like David understood that he was in covenant with God, we're in a better covenant than he had. And in this covenant, God has promised that if we'll trust him, he'll take care of us. Whatever your eighth issue is today, you're in covenant with God. Trust him to deal with eighth issue in your life. 
you say with communion, when you do communion, Jesus said, didn't say that there's any magic in this. And some groups like to think, well, this actually becomes the blood of Christ and actually becomes the body of Christ. Jesus never said that. In fact, he, in fact Jesus said that communion is a remembrance. A remembrance of what? Of that new covenant that he made available on the cross and that we're in. And because of this new covenant, Achish has to bow his knee before Christ. Now, you may say, well, Achish looks mighty strong in my life. Well, that's all the more reason to press into God like you've never pressed into before. Because many times God allows Achish in our lives to bring us closer to him. To teach us to trust him. Otherwise, if everything's just wonderful and we won the lottery every week and never had any problems, and how much attention would we give to our relationship with the Lord? But God's always got an achish for us. So what is your achish today? Jesus said, every time you do this, remember this. You're in covenant with God. So today, we're going to partake of communion in remembrance of the fact that we're in covenant with God. And when we do, I want you, wherever you are, to make where you are an altar. And say, God, you know the achish that's in my life. It's this. And I'm tired of trying to fight with him. I want you, because I'm in covenant with you, to do what only you can do in defeating achish in my life. You see, we talk a lot about revival, and that's wonderful. You know, revival time's exciting. Everybody's dancing and running the aisles and stuff like that. But, you know, you can do all that and Achish will walk out the door with you when it's over. I mean, we can stop on him all we want to, but when we leave, he gets up and walks out with us. I don't want to play that game. I want him defeated. I don't want to have to keep acting crazy to keep him at bay. I want him defeated. And because we're in covenant with God, many times what God will do, depending on what it is, but sometimes Achish is in our life because we've opened the door for him. And, and many times part of defeating him in our lives is God's going to say, okay, you got some repenting to do first. Whatever it takes, whatever God shows you, do it. But understand this, if you want to go ahead and take the thing off, the top one is a little difficult sometimes. Of, this, of revival is people get set free. They get set free of the achish in their life. And I don't know about you, but I'm tired of it being wrong. So let's remember we're in covenant with God. We're not left to deal with achish on our own. We can cry out to God and he will deliver us. Well, 
you remember the familiar passage, it says on the, on the night before our Lord was crucified, he ate with the disciples and he took the bread and he broke it and he said, as he ate it, he said, do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup and he said, this is my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. And because of that, we're in covenant with God. So since we're in covenant with God, I want to pray this morning for those who have an achish in their life. That they're tired of fighting on their own. And they're ready to, to appeal to that covenant that they're in through Christ. And ask for divine strength to deal with achish. Father, I thank you that you've given us a covenant with the holy God of the universe and that all problems, all achish, bow their knee before God. And so, Lord, I pray for those here today who say I have an achish in my life and I want him gone. Lord, help us to remember that we're in covenant with you. And Father, help us to remember we don't have to fight this thing in the flesh that we can appeal to that covenant. And whatever it is we need, as we saw in Psalm 34, you've provided it. You've given provision. You've given peace of mind. You've given uh, everything we would need. You've promised it to those who are in covenant with you, to those who fear your name. So Lord, I pray today, whatever the achish might be, that you will give us wisdom to know what to do, but I pray most of all that you will touch our situation with your power. And Lord, any strongholds that have, have enabled achish to rule in our lives will be broken in Jesus' name. Father, I pray um, for those who are just in tough situations, Lord, that are taxing and, and dealing with trying to care for loved ones and others who are facing different health issues. Father, I pray for healing, for wholeness in every way, for peace, for strength. God, we know you're a miracle working God. We know you've done it before. So we ask you to do it again. And we're appealing to that covenant. We're not appealing to any kind of goodness of our own or merit of our own. We're appealing to the covenant. And we pray, Father, that you will come into this situation and do what only you can do. And Lord, I pray for deliverance from financial burdens. Father, I know that, that as we've often heard in the past, you own the cattle on a thousand hills. Well, Lord, we need some of those funds released in our behalf. So we're appealing to the covenant. And Lord, anything that we need to change, show us. Father, for those who may have family problems, I pray, Lord, that you will invade those situations with your power that you will cause repentance to take place where it's needed. But Lord, we pray most of all for a restoration of relationships and for those who may not know you to come to saving faith. Father, whatever the situation, Lord, we, we know that we have to have more than just excitement. This is real life. And so, Lord, I do pray that your covenant power will become real life to us. That it won't just be something we talk about, but it'll become a reality. And that we'll see your hand move. 
that we'll see miracles take place. And Lord, I thank you for the miracle we heard about today. For this little girl's throat. Lord, I pray for more stories like this to come in the future. Father, I just thank you so much that that covenant that you made with us through Christ is for more than just salvation. It's for our sanctification too. So Lord, intervene intervene in our situations and I pray for complete and total release from any bondage that's in anyone's life in this place today in Jesus name Amen I hope you have a great Thanksgiving we won't have prayer meeting this week uh, but we'll start back next week Go in peace, in freedom. Don't forget you're a covenant person. Draw on that covenant. It's for more than getting you to heaven. It's for getting heaven into us. Amen. Be blessed. Have a great Thanksgiving. Paul and Catherine.